Have you ever seen the black oyster catcher? Or a pod of killer whales? Or a bald eagle swimming? You'll see these and many more exciting scenes with Dave Hancock on the Audubon Wild Light Theater, featuring the adventures of the greatest outdoor photographers in the world. on bald eagles in country like this, it's a good idea to make an aerial survey first, just to see what you're up against. These are shots of the islands and waters off the British Columbia coast, about 350 miles north of Vancouver. My wife, Lynn, riding the co-pilot seat beside me, was kept very busy recording the location of nests and the numbers of eagles and eaglets we saw in the nests as we cruised. In one hour, we counted as many as 200 adults in this country, so we figured we wouldn't be wanting for subject matter. This kind of country is ideal for the eagles because of the many miles of intertidal shoreline where the birds, who are lazy hunters, can sit in the trees and watch for the food that's sure to be left on the beaches as the tide ebbs. We considered this area as pristine habitat, relatively undisturbed by man, and our objective was to determine how the bald eagle, in general, made out under these conditions. This would aid us in understanding why the eagle had disappeared from so many other areas. We landed at Clem 2, cannery, an Indian village for refueling. But for another reason, too, it was to be our jumping off place for Kwakwa Camp in Kittisu Bay. In Clem 2, we were told of a young man named Sonny Dixon, who lived in nearby Bella Bella, who was in the habit of feeding 20 or 30 eagles every day. I wanted to see this site and photograph it. This was our chance, for later on we'd be too busy. Not too long ago, there was a bounty on bald eagles, and they were killed by the thousands by people in this area. In Alaska, for example, a bounty was paid on over 100,000 eagles. Today, although the bird is the national emblem of the United States, there are fewer than 1,000 nesting pairs. Sonny Dixon, in feeding his birds, has converted the eagle killers of his village to guardians of the bird. Twice a day, Sonny would collect the meat scraps and fat from the store and throw them out for the eagles. It was this action of bringing the eagles close to the village and showing them to his people that accomplished the remarkable change of their attitude. The white-headed ones are adults, over five years old. This is a young one. Sonny Dixon also knew of an area where eagles bathed in a small lake. And when we got there, we found a young eagle in the water. I saw an opportunity here to ban this one and get our operation off to a good start, so we proceeded to catch it while it was wet and unable to take off. There's nothing uncommon about eagles swimming like this, because sooner or later, any individual eagle will grab something in the water that he can't lift and will be forced to row it ashore or abandon it. Chances are he'll be soaking wet before he can even make the choice and he won't be able to take off.
The thing to remember in handling these big birds is their talons. The beak is not too dangerous, but their big claws can make quite a rift in our tender skin. Banding the birds helps us gather information on age, growth, and migration, and we band them every chance we get. It's a big day in any of these coastal villages when the supply ship arrives, and it was a big day for us too, because this one had all our gear on it. And the smaller fish packer would take us to our base camp at Kwakwa. Sure. once we settled in, was to make a survey of our territory from the ground or water, to confirm what we had recorded from the air. We already knew of nearly a hundred nests in this region. this creek, which meant a little bit of a portage. This is an unusual lake that flows out at low tide through this creek. But at the time of high tides, the salt water pours back in and then settles to the bottom, stratifying the lake.
Sun Eagle. Down the lake a few miles, we saw Sam's Eagle Nest, which looked to me typically an osprey nest, but could very well have been used by eagles. However, at this time, it was unoccupied. On the way home through Kitasu Bay, we spotted a pod of killer whales lounging on the surface. It seemed to me they were just putting in the time of day, but they habitually patrolled these waters and we often saw them. The man-killer reputation seems to have been misplaced in reference to these mammals. Recent research indicates they have no aggressive tendencies toward man, and are in fact highly intelligent animals. The largest fins belong to the males. Here are two females and a baby. Earlier I had put out a snare hoping to catch another eagle for banding, and we found one struggling on the beach. If you wonder about the raincoat, all I can say is that this coastal region, which is backed up by high mountains inland, has about 150 inches of rain a year, and you have to be prepared for a deluge at any time. On this same beach, some days later, the Browns decided to have a sockeye salmon barbecue, the way the Indians do it. And Lynn and I were invited. sockeye fillet, held in place with cedar strips, was propped over the smoke and heated the fire and allowed to roast. Meanwhile, Pat, Sam's elder brother, had cut a branch of Devil's Club, a common forest plant from which these Indians derive great benefits. tea, which gives the drinker great strength, good fortune, and cures many diseases. The branch is cut in four, the mystic number for these people. And later, Pat would place these sticks in his boat to increase his fishing luck.
patrols, we'd often see harbor seals sunning themselves. Or surprise a bunch of mergansers. Or follow the flight of a spotted sandpiper to her nest. The black oyster catchers were our favorite, and we watched them until their eggs hatched, and then disturbed them just long enough to get some pictures. The long red bill is very sharp and useful in finding and prying open the mussels, limpets, and chitons, which are their main food. The young are precocious, and they run while they are still wet after hatching. spotted another swimming eagle and since I was driving as well as filming this was her big chance she would have to get the eagle into the boat steering, handling the camera, and shouting instructions.
This was a magnificent adult bird, and we would have to measure her for the records. We assumed she was a female from her size, and the measurements confirmed this. inches, just over seven feet in wingspan. The males are smaller, with a wingspan not usually more than six feet, and weighing five to seven pounds. Fully grown females can weigh eight to twelve pounds. Each time Lynn and I went through this exercise, and we did it many times, measuring and banding these wonderful animals, it was with the hope that what we were doing in adding our bit to the sum of man's knowledge about his companions in this world would mean something eventually. Perhaps that the bald eagle would not become extinct. Perhaps even that men in time would learn that the balance of nature includes man himself.